Okay. So I think we are going to finish Kata work energy. Na? मैंने पोटेंशियल एनर्जी रफली बताया था ना क्या होता है पोटेंशियल एनर्जी सो कंजर्वेटिव कंजर्वेटिव फोर्सेस कैन आल्सो बी Also, be no, my dear, my lecture. Come on. Can also be So, summation of work done by conservative forces can also be written as minus of change in potential energy. so we have uh, some ground to cover today okay yeah, so please uh, pay attention so work done by conservative forces is equal to negative of change in potential energy what what does this mean so if i am taking sorry if i am taking a particle from position 1 to position 2 so the particle is here and then i take the particle along this path the particle is now here so let this be rf Let this be R I. So I said that for conservative forces, work done is independent of path taken. this means that work done only depends on sorry work done only depends on the initial and final points right so what i will do is as a logical step i will say that look if the particle is here then its potential energy is ui and if the particle is here then its potential energy is ui okay. so now we define potential energy which depends on the location of particle therefore ui which is the initial potential energy depends on initial position right and similarly final potential energy depends on final position आपको याद है यू रिमेम्बर इन क्लास टेंथ योर टीचर वुड हैव टोल्ड यू दैट पोटेंशियल 
energy is the energy of configuration of the system. Right? So the teacher was not wrong, absolutely right. It is the energy of configuration, but it is slightly more complicated, slightly more subtle than that. So potential energy number one can only be associated with conservative forces and potential energy number two is only a function of the position of the particle. The particle kaha pe hai, that will decide what the potential energy of the particle is. Now, if the work done is independent of path, that means that it is independent of the red line that I have drawn. And it is dependent only on the initial and final positions. Therefore, it stands to reason that the work done must be dependent on the initial and final potential energies. Okay. So it's like saying this. Supposing that you are standing on top of Mount Everest. Okay, and you want to go to Mount Kanchenjunga. Okay, you want to go to the top of Mount Kanchenjunga. Now, Mount Kanchenjunga is apparently one of the toughest peaks to climb. I don't think anybody has climbed it as yet. But supposing that you want to go from the peak of Mount Everest to the peak of Mount Kanchenjunga. Right? So I'm going to just change the slide. I'll come back to it and then you can take a snapshot. Or you can take a snapshot right now because I want to draw the Everest. I'm going to change the slide. So supposing that this is Mount Everest and this is Mount Kanchenjunga, right? And you are standing here and you want to go here, right? What will you do? One option, of course, is uh, Captain Gadget Inspector Gadget So Inspector Gadget ke topi mein ek helicopter hua I don't know whether you guys have seen this uh, cartoon or not So Dekha hai kisi ne Inspector Gadget Nahi dekha hai Koi nahi Koi baat बेटा डीसी और मार्वल के बियॉन्ड भी दुनिया है तो इंस्पेक्टर गैजेट के टोपी में वो रहता था हेलीकॉप्टर तो बोलता था गो गो गैजेट कॉप्टर तो दी हेलीकॉप्टर यूज्ड टू कम आउट ऑफ हिज कैप एंड देयर वाज टू टू हैंडल्स आल्सो यूज्ड टू कम आउट सो ही कुड स्टीयर द थिंग एंड उसके बाद से हेलीकॉप्टर के ब्लेड घूमना शुरू करते थे एंड दैट गाय यूज्ड टू फ्लाई अवे सो Unless you have something like that or a ropeway, as somebody suggested, and ropeway के लिए भी बहुत fight मारनी पड़ेगी Mount Everest के peak से कंधे जंगल के peak पर. So unless you have something like that, which we don't, what you are going to do is that you are going to follow a path which is going to lead from the top of Mount Everest down to the bottom, and then you are going to climb up again, right? So now once you have uh, reach the final position, I want to ask you uh, what is the difference in height? Okay. I mean, what what is the difference in height uh, uh, between your initial and final position? So, there are two ways of doing this. Number one is that as you are coming down, okay, as you are coming down, you actually calculate the aap kitta niche ja rahe ho. And then as you are coming up, you calculate ki aap kitna upar ja rahe ho. And then you find out the difference and you will find ki aap ki kitna height ka difference hai. And then you say ki achha Mount Everest ka height itna tha. Us se mein itna niche a gaya. Therefore, ab mein itne height pe hoon. But there is another way of doing this, which I think is a better way of doing this. And that is that the height of the peak of Mount Everest from the mean sea level is already defined. And the height of Mount Kanjanjanga from the mean sea level is already defined. So to find the difference in height, all you have to really do is subtract these two given figures. Okay? So we already know that the height of Mount Everest is something like 8, 8, 5, 6 meters. 
and let's say kanchanjunga is i don't know 7020 meters all you have to do is <coughs> all you have to do is subtract okay? and when you subtract uh, you get the difference in height now the thing is that it does not really matter how you go from the top of mount everest to the top of mount kanchanjunga you may fly you may take the uh, rope way uh, you may walk down and then up it does not matter it does not matter what path you take if you are going from the top of mount everest to the top of mount kanchanjunga the difference in height that you have traveled will be independent of path but it will be dependent on the actual height of mount everest and mount kanchanjunga right it will be dependent on these two numbers so associated with this point in space there is a number 8856 and associated with this point in space there is a number 7020 and if you are going from this point in space if you are going from this point in space to this point in space then all you have to do is subtract these two numbers uh, and you will get the height difference between these two points in the same way every point in space is associated with this thing called potential energy so here the potential energy is ui here the potential energy is uf and since the work done is independent of the paths taken therefore work done should be dependent only on these two quantities uh, which are actually a property of position so agar main yahan pe hu ye particle yahan pe hai to iski potential energy ui hogi agar ye particle yahan pe hai to iski potential energy uf hoga so the work done should simply be a subtraction of these two quantities right the minus sign is there for convention uh, there are not a lot of conventions in physics but this is a convention uh, the minus sign simply tells me that the uh, potential energy if i know the potential energy everywhere then the particle will move such that it will always go from a region of high potential energy to low potential energy that is the natural way in which the particle will move okay but we'll discuss that we'll discuss that later abhi okay. is chapter mein nahi we'll discuss that in detail in electrostatics okay so work done by conservative forces is equal to minus delta u and and work done by earth we know is equal to plus minus mgh therefore potential energy or the change in potential energy is equal to minus plus mgh but i am not really interested in change in potential energy i am interested in the potential energy at a point so potential energy due to gravity at points near the surface of the earth u is equal to mg right now what is h so m is the mass g is 9.8 h is the vertical distance of particle from reference level now this is going to be a very common uh, occurrence in physics so i might as well discuss this quantity called reference level 
So whenever you want to measure something, let's say that you want to measure the height uh, of, uh, I don't know. Let's go back to this diagram. Height of Mount Everest. Okay, let's go back to this diagram. You want to measure the height of Mount Everest. What do you do? I mean, what do you do? Okay, geography book mein likha hua hai, to rat liya, that's a separate thing. But you really want to measure the height of Mount Everest, then what do you do? Well, it will be a very complicated procedure, but the first question that you will have to answer, whether you use trigonometry or whether you use uh, 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 anything else, geometry, whether whatever you use, Ah, you'll have to first answer the question from where you're measuring the height from where that that has to be the most important question in fact the uh, statement that delhi is 2000 kilometers away is meaningless of course delhi is 2000 kilometers away it is 2000 kilometers away from uh, from uh, all points on a circle of radius 2000 kilometers uh, having the center at New Delhi, right? So, Delhi 2000 kilometer dur hai is a nonsensical statement. Delhi yaha se 2000 kilometer dur hai, that makes sense. Okay, so you are saying that the town of Delhi is located 2000 kilometers from this point. That's okay. That makes sense. So, from where is a very important when you measure the height of Mount Everest, you can measure it from the center of the earth. Like somebody said, you can measure it from the surface of the earth, but surface of the earth is not well defined. Uh, if, you have, uh, if you have gone on a long train journey, you would have seen uh, uh, in, in, in the train station, uh, at the end of the train station, when you have the name of the station on that big signboard, uh, then below that, they generally write the height of that uh, point from the mean sea level. So it turns out that although the land of the earth is uh, not smooth, but the water surface of the earth is very smooth and it is called the mean sea level. Right. So the height of Mount Everest is measured from the mean sea level. And then you measure every place height, every place is height from the mean sea level and then it makes sense. So Mount Everest is 8856 meters makes sense as compared to 7020 meters of Mount Kanchanjanga. This makes sense because in your mind automatically you are saying a chatik and mean sea level say 8800 meter wo hai, right? So you can sort of now make a comparison, a meaningful comparison. Agar maine Mount Everest ki height mean sea level se measure kiya aur Kanchanjanga ka height center of the earth se measure kiya so you are going to end up with a very nonsensical type of statement. You are going to say Mount Everest ka height 8, 8 kilometer hai aur uh, Mount Kanchanjanga ka height 6400 kilometer. Right? So, so, so you have to be very clear from where. In the exact same way the potential energy of an object is dependent on some sort of a reference level right now you have to define two things first thing you have to define the reference level kya hai or dusra you have to define ki us reference level pe potential energy kitni hai to jab hum mount everest ki height define kar rahe hai, so we are saying that we are measuring this height from the mean sea level and the height of the mean sea level is 0 meters. Right? Okay. So in the same way, the gravitational potential energy that you have already seen, that's why I've just written it. I don't want to prove it. I don't want to do anything with it. I just, I'm just writing it down because you have already seen this. I just want to make something clear. That something is the value of H. And that something is also the fact that potential energy carries no meaning whatsoever. 
unless and until you define a reference level and you define the potential energy at that reference level now generally whatever reference level you define the potential energy at that reference level you are going to take as zero right but that may not be necessary somebody else might you know jisko bahut zyada smart banna hai wo ye bol sakta hai ki acha theek hai reference level ko le lo रेफरेंस लेवल पे जो पोटेंशियल एनर्जी हम डिफाइन करेंगे because it is confusing in electrostatics in electromagnetism there is a term called potential right now it is connected to potential energy but it is not potential energy so the potential of the earth is zero and therefore the potential in your plug the voltage in your plug is 220 volts okay if the potential of the earth would have been defined as 100 volts then the potential in your plug would be defined as 320 volts right so the potential difference is really what matters so aap ke aap agar plug mein ungli daloge which i would suggest you don't please agar aap plug mein ungli daloge to you will be exposing your body to a potential difference of 220 volts because your finger Uh, would be at 220 volts whereas your feet if they are connected to the earth they will be at 0 volts so the electrons would flow from the region of or let me not say electron charges would flow from the region of high voltage to the low voltage because that is what they want to do and uh, you you would get electrocuted right similarly if you were to go and catch a high tension wire in which the potential is 11000 volts uh then your body and uh, provided that your feet are uh, on the ground then your body would be subjected to a potential difference of 11000 volts and of course the charges uh, they are now more eager to travel from high voltage to low voltage because the voltage is higher greater the difference uh, greater the uh, propensity to you know uh, travel down that path so a huge amount of charge much larger than as compared to when you poke your finger in the uh, electrical socket in your home much larger amount of charge will flow through your body of course making that damage much more right in the same way when you drop absurd question mat puchho mujhse nahi agar aapka agar if your if your feet and your legs Uh, if your feet and your hand are both at 220 volts then you will not get an electric shock please don't try it okay you will not be able to kahi pe likh ke nahi aa raha hai ki yahan 220 volt ho gaya hai to aisa nahi hoga ki aapko pata chalega so when you drop a ball if i drop if i just go outside and drop a ball from my balcony uh, it will definitely fall down and the reason is the reason is that it wants to go from a region of high potential energy to low potential energy. so the potential energy of an object in a gravitational field near the surface of the earth is given by mgh where h is the vertical distance of the particle from the reference level right now i want to take the example of the ball thrown from my balcony uh, to the next level now so if i am throwing the ball from the balcony here So this is my hand. Ball has been dropped. Okay, I'm not throwing. I'm just dropping it. So this is the ground, and this is I don't know the twentieth floor. I'm somewhere here. So let this height, let this height be. I, I, I let this height be twenty meters. Let this height be ten meters. Right now, where should I take the reference level to be? well it really does not matter if i take the reference level here to be zero okay theek hai ball ko koi fark nahi padta 
मैं बॉल को जो है उसके कान में बॉल के बोलूंगा देख तू तो जीरो मीटर पे है तो बॉल को कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ रहा है क्योंकि बॉल की पोटेंशियल एनर्जी यहाँ पे जीरो जूल्स है लेकिन बॉल की पोटेंशियल एनर्जी यहाँ पे माइनस ट्वेंटी मीटर पे पोटेंशियल एनर्जी हो जाएगी माइनस एम जी इंटू ट्वेंटी नाउ इफ यू टेक जी एस टेन देन दिस विल बी इक्वल टू माइनस टू हंड्रेड एम ओके एंड इफ यू टेक द मास ऑफ द बॉल एज वन के जी इट विल बी माइनस टू हंड्रेड जूल्स and the potential energy here <coughs> which is plus 10 meters right so this is plus 10 meters the potential energy will be equal to 100 joules right so yahan pe minus 200 joules hai yahan pe plus 100 joules hai aur jahan se main ball ko drop kar raha hu wo zero joules and right? so the ball does not care whether i have designated this as zero meters right my ball ke kaan mein अरे तू तो जीरो मीटर पे है और मैं ड्रॉप करूंगा तो इट विल नॉट बी एज इफ द बॉल विल से अच्छा मैं तो जीरो पे हूं तो खत्म और नीचे क्या जाना नो द बॉल विल से दैट लुक माय पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज जीरो जूल्स बट द लोकेशन हियर बट इफ द पोजीशन ऑफ द बॉल वर इफ द पोजीशन ऑफ द बॉल वर हियर देन द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ द बॉल देन द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ द बॉल वुड बी -200 जूल्स wants to go from a higher potential energy to lower potential energy zero joules hai yahan pe yahan pe minus 200 joules hai so of course the ball wants to fall down isse niche ball ja nahi sakti hai kyunki yahan pe floor hai the floor will prevent the ball from going further down now i can also say ki nahi 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 ye to bewakoofi hai yahan pe zero meter define kar raha hai koi problem nahi wahan pe zero meter define kiya to yahan pe 20 meter define ho gaya तो यहाँ की अब पोटेंशियल एनर्जी प्लस 200 जूल्स हो गई यहाँ की पोटेंशियल एनर्जी जीरो जूल्स हो गई तो इन आइदर केस है वेदर यू आर मेकिंग द वेदर यू आर यू नो हैविंग द रेफरेंस लेवल एट द बॉटम और एट द टॉप और एट द आई डोंट नो वेदर वेरेवर द बॉल इज यू कैन टेक द रेफरेंस लेवल टू बी एनी वेयर यू वॉन्ट द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी विल एडजस्ट इट सेल्फ अकॉर्डिंग right now i have told you that the work done by a conservative force is negative of change in potential energy so if the ball is dropped from this initial position to this final position right then according to the yellow reference level initial potential energy is zero final potential energy is minus 200 and minus of delta u is equal to minus of uf minus ui 200 that is equal to 200 joules right then x again one minute so minus of change in potential energy is 200 joules and therefore work done therefore work done which is change in 
potential energy, negative of change in potential energy will be 200 K. So what is potential energy? Well, potential energy is nothing but work done. मैंने आपको कोई नई चीज नहीं बताई ओके इंस्टेड ऑफ फाइंडिंग द लाइन इंटीग्रल ऑफ ए फोर्स बिटवीन इनिशियल पॉइंट एंड फाइनल पॉइंट ऑल्टरनेटिवली यू कैन सिंपली सब्ट्रैक्ट द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी बिटवीन दोज टू पॉइंट एंड दैट विल गिव यू द वर्क डन तो पोटेंशियल एनर्जी इज नथिंग बट एनदर वे ऑफ एक्सप्रेसिंग वर्क डन and since potential energy is only associated with conservative forces therefore work done by conservative forces may be replaced by change in potential energy so the work done by conservative forces may alternatively be expressed as change in potential energy that's it that is it work done you can say that the work has been done by the gravitational force as the ball comes from the initial position to the final position what is this work done by the earth plus mgh niche aa raha 200 kilos or you can say that the work uh, or you can say that the change in potential energy negative of change in potential energy uh, of the ball is equal to minus delta u which is minus minus 200 which is 200 joules so the change in negative of change in potential energy is also 200 joules so these are two different ways of expressing the same thing okay? same thing work is done by a conservative force negative of change in potential energy okay? absolutely the same thing nahi nahi work energy theorem jaisa nahi hai ye नहीं नहीं वर्क एनर्जी थ्योरम जैसा नहीं है लेट मी एक्सप्लेन लेट मी एक्सप्लेन लेट मी एक्सप्लेन सो आई कैन नाउ राइट द वर्क एनर्जी थ्योरम आई कैन नाउ राइट द वर्क एनर्जी थ्योरम एज समेशन ऑफ वर्क डन इज इक्वल टू चेंज इन कैनेटिक एनर्जी राइट दिस इज द वर्क एनर्जी but this summation of work is the summation of work by all forces and some forces may be conservative some forces may be non conservative so i will change the left hand side and i will write summation of work done by conservative forces plus summation of work done by non conservative forces is equal to delta k so c stands for conservative and nc stands for non conservative but summation of work done by conservative forces can also be written as minus delta u right that is what i have just told you so i can write this as minus delta u plus summation of work done by non conservative forces is equal to delta k therefore summation of work done by non conservative forces will be equal to delta k plus delta u and if okay if summation of work done by non conservative forces is equal to zero then this implies that delta k plus delta u is equal to zero right and this implies that kf minus ki plus uf minus ui is equal to 0 this implies ki plus ui is equal to kf plus uf and this is called the law of conservation of mechanical energy right but when is conservation of mechanical energy even applicable right when is the law of conservation of mechanical energy even applicable it is only applicable under the very strict condition that the summation of work done by non conservative forces is zero okay okay when non conservative forces are absent when forces like friction are absent only then does this happen 
right? So there is a law of conservation of energy, which you have used, by the way, as the law of conservation of energy, not the same, absolutely not the same, okay? So what you did in class 10th was by initial kinetic energy plus initial potential energy is equal to final kinetic energy plus final potential energy. We have energy conserved, but this is not law of conservation of energy. Nahi hai. It is the law of conservation of mechanical energy and this only can happen or this can only be applied or this is only valid. This is only true when non-conservative forces are absent. Non-conservative forces are zero. Okay. In fact, pe, what I would like to also add here is uh, something else also and that is um, there are forces for which work done may be not con neither conservative nor non-conservative. Right? So let me uh, let me just let me just write this again. Plus sum of work done by external agent, right? So if you push or pull an object, that force that you apply is neither conservative nor non-conservative. So we get summation work done by external agent is equal to delta K. Okay? So we get So if summation of work done by non-conservative forces plus summation of work done by cell agent is equal to zero, then delta K plus delta U is equal to zero. And that is when you get the law of conservation of mechanical energy. So, you pick up a ball from the floor, you are an external agent, and the work done by you will neither be conservative nor be non-conservative. And the law of conservation of mechanical energy will not apply in this case. Okay. Law of conservation of mechanical energy will not apply in this case. You cannot do Ki plus Ui is equal to Kf plus Ui. Okay. This is understood by everyone. Please take a screenshot. Lilia, screenshot. Okay. So before we move ahead, a couple of questions. Find Potential energy of system ha, zero zero potential energy in the line.
हाँ भाई अलग अलग आंसर क्यों आ रहा है पोटेंशियल एनर्जी विल बी इक्वल टू प्लस टू इंटू फाइव इंटू जी प्लस फाइव इंटू टेन इंटू जी माइनस थ्री इंटू टू इंटू जी माइनस फोर इंटू एट इंटू जी मैंने एम जी एच नहीं लिया मैंने उसको पूरा मिला उला के ले लिया प्लस हंड्रेड प्लस फाइव हंड्रेड माइनस सिक्सटी माइनस थ्री ट्वेंटी प्लस टू हंड्रेड राइट दिस विल बी द पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ द सिस्टम चल सो नाउ व्हाट वी लर्न यस्टरडे इसका एप्लीकेशन चेंजिंग द स्लाइड फाइंड पोटेंशियल एनर्जी ऑफ चेन ऑफ मास एम जल्दी से स्क्रीन शॉट लेना का प्लीज जल्दी से करिए हो गया
Ale Kula je Oh yeah, enough time. First step, slice into small pieces. Second step, arbitrarily choose one piece. Third step, assign a distance to the chosen element and assign a new variable for this distance, which will automatically give rise to the D term. So if the distance of the element from the reference line is Y, then the width of the element is Y. Okay. Next step, find the physical quantity for that element. Uh, so du is equal to minus emgy. Okay. Next step, using unitary method, convert dm into y. So, agar length l may mass m hai, unit length may mass m by l hoega, or dy length may mass m by l into dy hoega. So du is equal to separately du is equal to minus m by l dy into g into y. Okay. Rearranging all these things, rearranging all these things, minus mg by l into y dy. This gives me the potential energy for this small element. So U is equal to, or the potential energy of the whole chain is equal to the sum of potential energies of all the elements. So this will be equal to minus mg by L integration of y dy. Minus mg by L because it is a constant. 
So what is the limits now? This is the last mathematical step. You look at one extreme of the object and you look at the other extreme of the object and you ask yourself, what is the value of y for this guy? So for this, the value of y is zero. And for this element, the value of y is equal to L. So u will be equal to minus mg by L integral of y dy from 0 to L, which will be equal to minus mg by L into L square by 2. So u is equal to minus mg L by Very, very important question. Very, very important question. Every question that you will see will be like this. Every question that you will see will be like this. I'm going to change the slide. I'm going to change the slide. Please take a screenshot. Question three. Find potential energy of J. M length L. So this time chain is kept on a sphere. And this is the reference level. Radius of the sphere is R, and the length of the chain is less than pi R by T. This is the topmost point of the sphere. So now try this.
हाँ ये वाला नहीं होएगा हाँ चलो आई शो यू सो हाउ डू आई टेक एन एलिमेंट हियर वेल देर आर टू काइंड्स ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशंस दैट यू विल सी वन विल बी द लिनियर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन व्हिच वी सॉ हियर एंड इन द लिनियर डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन यू विल टेक फ्रॉम अ रेफरेंस पॉइंट इन लिनियर डिस्टेंस but here the distribution is not linear it is angular therefore what we are going to do is again and we are going to chop this up into small pieces ah good yes we are going to choose one out of the infinitely many and now instead of saying that look this is at a distance of x we are going to say that look this is at a distance of theta Is at an angle of theta from the vertical, and the angle subtended by the actual element itself is p theta. Okay. This is the way to handle circular. Uh, this is the way to handle circular uh, spread, circular uh, distribution. Okay. Now let's start again. Uh, so we will have. This width is equal to r d theta. Yeah, remember, angle is equal to r upon radius. And the height of this element from our reference line will be, if this is theta, then this is theta. This should be equal to r cosine theta. Okay. So. Du, that is the potential energy of this element, will be equal to plus this time because it is above the yellow line, above the reference line. Dn into G into H, which is R cosine theta, right? And again we go to Dm. So if length L contains mass m, then unit length will contain mass m by L. And R D theta length will contain mass m by L into R D theta. Okay. Okay. So D U is equal to m by L into R into D theta into G into R cosine theta. Right. I'll write it down here now. So D U is equal to m R square G upon L. Into cosine theta d theta. So u must be equal to m r square g upon l integral of cos theta d theta. Right now again, last part limits very important. What is the angle for this element and what is the angle for this element? What is the value of theta for this? So the value of theta for this guy. Value of theta for this is zero, right? And the value of theta for this guy, the value of theta, is equal to L by R. Remember, angle is equal to arc upon radius. There's a very special reason why I have said that L is less than pi r by two. L is less than by less than pi r by two. का मतलब ये हुआ कि ये chain यहाँ से overhang नहीं कर रही. अगर ये chain यहाँ से overhang कर रही होती, then it would be a combination of this question and the previous question. But this ensures that the chain is on the arc, on an arc, on the sphere. So this angle angle is equal to arc upon radius, which is equal to L upon r. So the limits will go from zero to L by R, and therefore we get U is equal to m R square G by L into uh, sine of L by R. Right? This is the answer. This is the answer.
right? Please take a screenshot. Write it down. So this is the upper limit. This is the lower limit. So I'm changing the slide now. Hey, bhai, cos dx dx. Kya likh raha hai, bhai? Cos theta d theta. Hai. I'm changing the slide now. Okay. So now we need to write the relation. between potential energy and force. So change in potential energy is equal to minus of integral F D L from R i to R F, right? Please notice, absolutely the same as work done, but with a minus sign, right? Because potential energy, change in potential energy is negative of uh, the work done. Then, अगर F गिवन है और माइनस डेल्टा U निकालना है तो ऐसा निकालेंगे अगर U गिवन X कॉम्पोनेंट ऑफ फोर्स विल बी माइनस डेल U बाई डेल X दैट मीन्स यू आर डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग U ओनली विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू X Y कॉम्पोनेंट विल बी माइनस डेल U बाई डेल Y Z कॉम्पोनेंट विल बी माइनस डेल U बाई डेल Z And the test that I promised, test for a conservative force. So for F is equal to some X component I cap, some Y component J cap, plus some Z component K cap, if del fx by del y is equal to del oops, is equal to del fy by del x del f x by del z is equal to del f z by del x and here del f y by del z is equal to del f z by del y then force is conservative for a two dimensional force f is equal to fx i cap plus fy j cap del fx by del y is equal to del f i by del x is sufficient. Right. So if all these three equations are, if all the three equations are satisfied, then a force is conservative. But if you have only a two dimensional force, then there is no problem, only that uh, del f x by del y is equal to del f y. And this is easy to remember. 
अगर आपने ऊपर एक्स लिया है तो नीचे वाई आना चाहिए फिर सामने वाई आना चाहिए नीचे एक्स आना चाहिए वेरी इजी टू रिमेम्बर यू जस्ट टेक टू यू जस्ट टेक एनी टू ऑफ द लेटर एक्स वाई जेड ऊपर वाई लिखा तो नीचे जेड लिखा तो सामने जेड होएगा नीचे वाई होएगा वेरी वेरी इजी टू रिमेम्बर कैन आई चेंज द स्लाइड प्लीज टेक अ स्क्रीनशॉट आई एम गोइंग टू चेंज द स्लाइड एंड आई एम गोइंग टू शो यू हाउ दिस वर्क्स प्लीज टेक अ स्क्रीनशॉट या स्क्रीनशॉट ओके सो व्हाट वाज द फर्स्ट फोर्स दैट वी हैड डिस्कस्ड वाई आई कैप प्लस एक्स जे कैप this guy is fx this guy is fy don't be confused about x and y when i am writing the x component it is the i cap ka coefficient when i am writing y component it is the j cap ka coefficient so del fx by del y is equal to the differentiation of this with respect to y it comes out to be 1 And del f y by del x is equal to the differentiation with respect to x of this. Also comes out to be one. They are equal. Therefore, the force must be conservative. Okay. Let's try the other one. F is equal to two x y i cap plus x square j cap. Right. So this is f x. This is f y, so we get del f x by del y is equal to the differentiation with respect to y of two x y, where you have to treat x as a constant. Two is of course a constant, so two x comes out, and you are differentiating y with respect to y, which is one, so you get two x, and. del f y by del x is equal to del y del x now you are differentiating x square with respect to x and you get 2x they are the same therefore the force was conservative right you remember we got 15 newtons f is equal to x y i cap minus y j cap in this case This is f x. This is f y. So we get del f x by del y is equal to the differentiation with respect to y of x y. We get x and del f y by del x. We get differentiation with respect to x of minus y. And this is zero because y will be considered as a constant. so they are not equal since they are not equal that's it end of story this cannot be conservative okay ya aaya sabko samajh mein i hope you are understanding is just basic differentiation with a weird symbol and that symbol is telling us to carry out a very specific operation that operation is that you are going to differentiate with the letter with respect to the variable in the denominator but keeping all the other variables as constants okay the last slide mein kya hai kya acha ye hai kya maine bola tha screenshot lo screenshot lo now one more thing remains actually two more things remain so let's quickly cover this number 1 is uh, for forces in one dimension agar force ek hi dimension mein hogi to obviously ya to keval x component hoega ya keval y hoega ya keval z hoega aur kuch ho nahi sakta is case mein all forces will be conservative right how is this so f will be equal to plus 
plus minus some function of x. Right? This is the x component. Del f x by del y will be equal to zero, and del f y by del x will be equal to zero, uh, since f y to zero here, and since f x is a function of x. So, if any function of x has force, for example, for example, spring force f is equal to minus k, it is guaranteed that this force will be conservative. And for this, we can write f is equal to minus du by dx. Notice now I don't have to write del. So this tells me that force is equal to the negative of the slope of ux graph. So this means that if I were to draw a graph between x and u, right, and the graph would be something like this, I don't know, maybe something like this. Then, if the particle is located at this point, this x coordinate, then its potential energy will be this much. And the slope of the graph will be this, positive number plus one plus two something like that therefore the force on this object therefore the force on this object will be negative of this plus one plus two that means minus one or minus two so the force on the object will be like that. if the particle is located at this location on the x coordinate right then its potential energy will have this value it will be maximum and it's slope will be a flat line. So here the force on the particle will be equal to zero. Similarly, if the particle is located at this point, then the, then the potential energy will be this much. And now the slope of the graph is negative, negative one, negative two, something like that. So the force on the particle will be like Similarly, if the particle is located at this point, then this will be the value of the potential energy. And the slope of the graph would be like this. It is again negative. So the force on the particle would be here. If you look at this point, then the slope would be zero and the force would be zero. And if you look at this point, then the potential energy would be this value, and the slope of the graph would be this, and the force on the particle would be the backward direction because slope is positive, so the force will be negative. Right now, you may ask, "Itna jada, itni baar ye sab karne ki kya zarurat hai?" And the answer is that. This is important because of two things. Number one is that if the particle is located at if the particle is located at this point or this point, the force on the particle is zero. Right? So this means that this position is that of an equilibrium position. We make the graph. So this point and this point is a point of equilibrium, right? And I want to and I want to write this down. So this point and this point are points of equilibrium. But there is a difference. The difference is points of equilibrium at the force zero. The difference is that if I were to move this particle to this location, right, or this location, let's say, or here I leave it, I leave it. So, in this negative direction, the force is acting. So, it will run away. And if I move this particle from here, I leave it. So, in the positive direction, the force is acting. It will run away. 
लेकिन अगर पार्टिकल यहां रखा है और मैंने उसे डिस्टर्ब करके यहां ले आया तो उसके ऊपर जो फोर्स लगी है उसकी वजह से वापस अपने पोजीशन पे जाने की कोशिश करेगा और अगर मैं यहां से डिस्टर्ब करके यहां ले आया तो फिर नेगेटिव फोर्स लगी है तो फिर ये वापस जाने की कोशिश करेगा सो देयर फोर दिस इज कॉल्ड ए पॉइंट ऑफ अनस्टेबल इक्विलिब्रियम एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड ए पॉइंट ऑफ स्टेबल इक्विलिब्रियम दिस इज ए पॉइंट ऑफ न्यूट्रल ठीक है ये सारी थ्योरी है ये सब टेस्ट के पहले याद ही रखना पड़ेगा एंड दिस एक्चुअली वेरी इजी टू रिमेम्बर बिकॉज ये क्या चीज है ये किस चीज का पॉइंट है ये ग्राफ पे क्या है ये और ये ग्राफ पे क्या है व्हाट इज दिस पॉइंट मैक्सिमा दिस इज मिनिमा राइट मैक्सिमा मिनिमा का याद है किसी को क्या होता है हाँ स्टेबल इक्विलिब्रियम के लिए डी टू यू बाई डी एक्स स्क्वेर शुड बी लेस देन जीरो अनस्टेबल इक्विलिब्रियम के लिए डी टू यू बाई डी एक्स स्क्वेर शुड बी ग्रेटर देन जीरो न्यूट्रल इक्विलिब्रियम के लिए डी टू यू बाई डी एक्स स्क्वेर शुड बी इक्वल टू सी मैक्सिमा okay. कहा होता था मैक्सिमा के लिए क्या कंडीशन होती हाँ तो वही तो मैंने भी लिखा है नहीं मैंने ये नहीं लिखा हाँ अनस्टेबल है ना ओ मैंने गलत लिखा ओ ठीक है right so this is uh, something that you need to know and finally i'm going to change the slide i'm going to share raha na ye raha na jo maine uh kahan likha ye 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 raha na relation between fx and uh, अगर एक ही डायमेंशन uh, होएगा तो बाकी रिलेशन तो नहीं आएंगे अगर एक ही डायमेंशन होएगा तो बाकी रिलेशन तो नहीं आएंगे तो उसी को हम फिर फिर डेल लिखने की जरूरत नहीं है वो फिर डी में ही काम चल जाएगा ओके चल वन मोर थिंग वन मोर थिंग आई वांट टू टेल यू and that is the concept of power perhaps 
one of the easiest things in physics. No complications whatsoever. No deviation from the work done in the last time. So power is equal to rate of doing work. Therefore, it is equal to dW by dP. Dw remember is equal to f dot dl and dl by dt is nothing but v so power is the dot product of uh, force and velocity the units are watts and it is a scalar So I'll stop here. Uh, in the next class, we'll do some numericals on this. Uh, we have finished this chapter. The chapter is over. Still, we'll do some more problems. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next chapter. Okay. Chalo. Iske baad class hai kya? Should I end the meeting or uh, you are going to continue? There is a class after this. No class. Okay, I'll end, I'll end it. Okay. Chalo, bye-bye.